So I've downloaded nearly every single productivity app out there, and these eight apps are the only apps that students need to be productive and get stuff done. All right, so first up, we've got Feedly. If you've ever found yourself literally pulling out your hair, trying to stay on top of the latest legal news or whatever topic you're interested in, then this is the app for you because it literally does all the hard work for us by gathering all the information that we need, whether it's from blog posts, articles, social platforms, the news, wherever, and brings it all into one place so that we can just read it through whenever suits us best. Okay, so once we signed up to the app, we will be greeted by the homepage, and all we need to do is add our own relevant folder. This is the place where we're gonna get all the information that we want into one place. So we're gonna click on feeds, on the side here, we're gonna add new folder and type in the name of the topic that we want to start following. So for us, it could be law. Now I've already done this already, hence why I'm not gonna type something in right now. And we can see on the left-hand side, I've got a law feed already. So in this feed, I can see a bunch of different stuff about different things that I'm already following, including above the law and from Scotus blog. Now, if I press the plus button down here, I can then add stuff into this folder. So I'm gonna type in law to find relevant legal uh, pieces of information scroll down and just add whatever thing I think is interesting and add it to my law folder and press done. So when we navigate back to our law feed, we can then see all of that information has been aggregated into one place. And it becomes as simple as that when it comes to reading the relevant pieces of news for that particular topic. So all in all, we're left with this awesome looking feed, which literally takes like five minutes to set up. And it's all in chronological order. When we tap on an article, we can favorite it. We can add it to our read later list as well. Uh, we can share it with ourselves and we can also mark it as done or unread so that whenever we refresh the pages I'm going to do here that article then disappears so that we know that we've read it. It's so simple to use and saves us just a whole heap of time. Next we've got Anki. Now Ebbinghaus's forgetting curve tells us that knowledge decays pretty quickly so if we don't revisit stuff consistently over a long period of time we're going to quickly forget it. So this is why spaced repetition and spaced learning is so important when it comes to learning. Having tested out a bunch of different apps I found that the the number one way to use space repetition and space learning in our studies is to use Anki. Basically, its inbuilt algorithm forces us to revise stuff that it thinks that we're on the cusp of forgetting, which helps to encode that information more deeply into our head. And it's a great way to ensure that we're staying on top of all of that information so we don't have to cram when it comes to exam time. Now, when we first open up the app, it does look a little confusing, but it's actually quite straightforward. All we need to do is to create or add an empty deck, add some cards to that deck, and then begin testing ourselves on the cards that we've just added. And so all that's really happening is that the, the app will throw questions at us depending on how easy or hard we found that question last time. And so if we found the question quite easy last time we tried to answer it, there'll be a larger gap in time before we next see that question again. But if the, if the answer was quite difficult to recall last time, then we're gonna see that just a few days or weeks later. So basically the app just automates the whole revision process for us and it's absolutely game changing. If you're keen to take your studying to the next level through Anki, then make sure you check out my dedicated video on Anki over here somewhere. <laughs> right, this app is hands down the best way to take notes as a law student. It's both impressive and beautiful. Now there's a bunch of great note-taking apps out there and we're always gonna have this shiny toy syndrome where we're always gonna want to download the latest and greatest note-taking app on the market. But I love this app because it allows us to have the scientific benefits of handwriting our notes while also allowing us to design our learning environment in a way that fits and matches our learning style. Like if we're a visual learner, we can upload and annotate images and PDFs, we can draw things and we can just basically design everything we want to match the way that we want to learn. Like, I don't know, let's say that we want to take notes using the Cornell method, or we just want to take bullet point notes, or we want to make flashcards. All of this stuff is designed and inbuilt within the app itself. It's fantastic. Plus the app goes way beyond just purely learning stuff. Like we can create to-do lists, we can plan out our week, we can even write music. Like there's just so much we can do using this app, which allows us to create and build our life all within one simple app. Next up, we've got OneSec. If you've ever taken a quick break to go on social media, only to end up spending like 30 minutes or an hour scrolling through the platform, then you're definitely not alone. Social platforms use psychological tricks to keep us hooked and keep us scrolling on the platform for as long as possible. It basically works like this. So to begin with, there's some sort of internal or external trigger that makes us stop what we're doing, pick up our phone and start scrolling on social media. Then as soon as we've opened up the app, we're greeted by some sort of variable reward, which is very often like a like on our content or a comment on our content, or maybe we just see something that we like and we just wanna stay and check it out. And then from that, we just 
invest even more time and energy into the platform. We can start commenting more, we start posting our own content and so on and so forth. And then that basically leads us to staying on that social platform for far longer than we ever intended. So OneSec breaks this vicious cycle by forcing us to take a deep breath before we even open the app, which I guess essentially breaks the link between the trigger and the action. Over the first couple of weeks of using OneSec, our brain essentially learns that opening up social media or any other app or website that we choose essentially means I now have to wait 10 seconds, which is incredibly boring. So the instant gratification of opening up social media or the app that we choose starts to fade and it gets really boring. We no longer have the urge to open up that app and begin procrastinating. Right, next up we've got Notion and I use this app to pretty much organise my entire life and it's the perfect app for writing and organising long form notes as a student. So while I I use GoodNotes for quickly taking notes, annotating documents and quick things like that. I use Notion for longer form content curation where I can logically structure all my notes in one place using databases, Kanban boards, toggles and things like that. So let's say for instance that I'm making notes for my degree. It would be very easy to create a database within Notion that includes all the notes I've ever made for my degree and all of that organised and categorised by the individual modules and subtopics within those modules too. Then for each individual subtopic within each of the modules, I can have separate pages which allow me to organise all my notes. I can have different headings, different toggles, I can search through this stuff, I can add like cross-references to other topics from other modules and basically create this second brain where all of that information I have in my head is now translated onto a piece of paper within Notion. The problem with using Word or PowerPoint to basically keep hold of all our notes is that we end up with hundreds of standalone, unsorted documents that have no real logical flow to them. But Notion allows us to very quickly and easily sort of sort of visualise how the course looks, how different areas or different topics link to one another, and also give us a perfect system for updating and, you know, making sure the notes are fresh and easy to revise from when it comes to exam time. As I said before, I absolutely love Notion, so if you want to see the database that I use for taking notes, then make sure you check out the link in the description section below. Next up, we've got Cite This For Me. Now, I'm kind of cheating here because this isn't exactly a phone app, but it's too good not to include. It's essentially just this web app that allows us to create perfect citations in seconds. I honestly find that doing the citations is the worst part when it comes to writing an essay, especially when I forget to make a note of the source as I go along. So this app saves me a whole ton of time and hassle. In short, all we need to do is decide what referencing style we want to use. So for law students, this may be our scholar, and then we need to add our reference. So this can be from a website, from a book, from a journal, from a article from pretty much wherever we want. It's super easy to find what we want, edit that reference, and then basically have this fully constructed reference or citation that we can then use and add to our essays. If you use Google Chrome, there's also a really neat Chrome extension that allows you to quickly reference and cite any web page that you're on. So if you're the sort of person that's regularly citing web pages and articles from the internet, then do make sure you check that one out. Next, we've got Microsoft Lens, which is basically just a portable scanner for our pocket. It lets us scan things from whiteboards, documents, or anything that we've written down and then save and edit that stuff digitally on our phones. One of the great things about Microsoft Lens is its use of optical character recognition, which allows us to take any text on a piece of paper or on the whiteboard and turn that into text that we can edit digitally ourselves. So if we are I know, studying class and there's a bunch of stuff on a whiteboard, all we need to do is take a photo of the whiteboard, then Microsoft Lens will automatically crop, enhance and rotate that image, and then we can basically edit that image however we see fit depending on our learning needs. Or if we're given a handout in class, we can just take a picture of that handout, we can automatically scan it to our phones, upload it into GoodNotes and start annotating it straight away. It's literally perfect. Finally, we've got Spotify and there is a ton of studies that show that listening to music can help to reduce stress, improve motivation and enhance our focus whenever we're studying. And that's why I've put together my own study playlist that you can check out in the link below. Now, I'm not gonna go into any detail about what Spotify is because yeah, it's, <laughs> it's just music, but if you want to check out my playlist, then feel free to do so. It's all pretty chilled vibes and it's the exact playlist that I listen to whenever I'm studying. 